Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the STP seminar this morning on opening safely and managing shared spaces. It's a big day for our town and city centres after four months of difficulties. We're now starting to see some of the pandemic restrictions relaxed, and now we're seeing, you know, non-essential shops have been open for a short period of time. We're now seeing the, the wider reopening of our town and city centres, but we must do this carefully. We've built a strong foundation in Scotland, and I think the key is to try and keep on top of that. Number one, to avoid you know, a re-emergence of the original wave of coronavirus, but also building on the solid foundation to make sure that we don't see a second spike moving into the, the, the autumn. But it's a, it's a really exciting day for lots of businesses who've been struggling through this and very encouraging uh, to see that we're, we're taking the next step forward. We've got a, a fairly sharp agenda today. A, we've got Ian Gilzean, Chief Architect from Scottish Government, who's going to give an overview of the advice that Scottish Government has pulled together. We're going to hear from Mary Stewart, who's the Planning Manager and the Chair of Infrastructure Services in Aberdeenshire Council. Uh, looking at how cross-departmental approach is benefiting towns across the Shire. Uh, and I'm going to talk uh, briefly now about the Love Local campaign, which launches on Monday. We'll then go into Q&A. So we've got people from economic development, planning, roads, transportation, licensed in environmental health, trading standards. Uh, we are entering into what I would suggest is uncharted territories. So we just need to be pragmatic. We need to have forbearance, we need to work together to try and work through all of the little anomalies that will arise, no doubt, over the next, uh, the next few weeks. But the key message here is we have a strong foundation and we really want to, to keep that strong foundation and reopen slowly, cautiously, and most importantly, safely. In terms of engaging today, there are a number of ways that you can engage. You can use the chat box, you know, to speak to the, the, the delegates that are in the conference today. You can also raise your hand and use the chat box to ask questions. So we'd encourage you, if you have any burning questions, to, to ask those just now and we'll deal with them hopefully either after individual speakers. You can indicate who you want to direct your question to or what the issue is. So use the raise hand or chat box. And also please try and promote uh, social media you know, uh, the hashtag Scotland's Towns, at Scotland's Towns, just to let people know that we're dealing with this. And once the seminar is complete, this will be recorded and put up on the web platform as a digital asset. So as questions and issues arise over the coming week, we can point you in the direction of the advice from this seminar. Uh, very briefly, just to give you a, a quick overview, I did mention uh, that we are launching the Scotland Loves Local campaign. If there's been any positives coming out of the pandemic, I think some of those are around localism, the return to local supply chains, to local businesses. Personally, I'm now getting milk delivered to my door from the local farmer. Uh, we get deliveries of fruit and vegetables from, a, a, again, another local business. So we're trying our best to support local jobs, local economy, uh, and now that the town centres are reopening gradually, I think we want to try and maintain that, to try and think first about local. If you're going to have a cup of coffee, could you go to the independent coffee shop? Let's support local businesses because that's supporting our economic recovery. So on Monday, we will have Cabinet Secretary and STP launching this national campaign, uh, Scotland Loves Local. So that's going to be the brand that will run through until Christmas and we'll, there'll be a lot of activity uh, flowing from that, a lot of uh, national media. So come Monday, we'll see news bulletins on SDV. There's lots of digital and print media output. We've got uh, relationships with Press and Journal, uh, with uh, NewsQuest, so lots of broadsheet print coverage to try and encourage citizens to engage with their local economy. The big opportunity, obviously, as you've already worked out, lots of people will not be traveling en masse back into city center offices. Lots of public sector workers are still going to be working in a mobile stroke agile way. 
So these are new captive markets for local businesses to connect with. We've already seen some of these assets being developed through the Scottish Government's funding, the Bids Resilience Fund, and the current funding, the Townsend Bids Resilience and Recovery Fund, where lots of loyalty schemes, virtual high streets, digital markets, etc., have been constructed. And again, this is all to try and support local jobs, local supply chain, build in resilience to our, our communities. So we would ask all of you to hook into this campaign and to try and you know, put your own local slant on it. We want to see all 32 local authorities lift this. This is a call to Scotland's citizens to support its businesses, its economy, and to, just to start thinking about sustainability. You know, we don't need to buy everything off Amazon. We, we, we don't need to import everything from China. We've got very good products on our own doorstep that we've maybe forgotten about, but the pandemic has reminded us just how important that is. So please do all you can to support this. And some of the initiatives that will fall under that will be climate action towns. We'll also see the future high street competition, which will engage with Education Scotland, Young Scot, uh, the industry itself, to look at what sort of future town centres we'd like to see. Uh, in addition to that, we're also undertaking a, a fundamental review of the town centre action plan. That was launched by Scottish Government a couple of weeks ago. It's been chaired by Professor Lee Sparks, who's also the chair of SDP. And we've had our first meeting, inception meeting. And again, that's looking at how we build ambition into uh, a, a renewed Scotland. How do we build renewed town centres with new focus, dealing with the changing demographic, thinking about the housing needs, thinking about climate emergency, about the need for more digital resilience, etc. So that, that is due to publish in the autumn. And I think we've already been recognised in Scotland as having some of the best policy globally. This just keeps us ahead of the game. And hopefully the collaborations that have been built during the pandemic can be uh, nurtured and, and maintained moving forward and we all just work together uh, to try and get a better Scotland out of all of this. So without further ado, it gives me a lot of pleasure to introduce Ian Gilzean, Chief Architect of Scottish Government, who's been very busy over the last month or so pulling together uh, guidance on how to, how to manage shared spaces within town centres, uh, what's the best practice out there in terms of reopening safely. So I'm going to hand over now to Ian um, and and I'll be happy to take some questions if you can use the chat box facility once he's finished his talk. Okay, thanks, Phil, uh, very much for that introduction. Um, I've got some slides um, just to cover uh, the various points uh, in my talk. And you referred to the um, Safer Public Spaces guidance that we have pulled together. So I'll base, base the talk around that um, guidance, um, but it does flag up a lot of the issues you've just referred to. Um, uh, the guidance itself is, is based on um, UK government, Ministry of Housing uh, for Communities and Local Government guidance that was produced to help um, manage the safe return to our high streets and urban spaces. Um, but we uh, decided to adapt that guidance to, to more directly suit Scottish circumstances. And I'm glad we did that because um, there has been a, a divergence in various approaches um, between England and Scotland. So it means that we've got a document that's much easier to update um, for our own purposes. Uh, it also dovetails with other guidance, sectoral guidance, such importantly uh, retail, uh, and the Transport Transition Plan. And this guidance was published on the 29th of June uh, to coincide with um, retail and um, non-essential shops reopening. Um, and I think your, your own feedback, Phil, on the guidance and from others was very helpful in developing um, the, the guidance and how we put this together. So um, I'll move on to slide two. Um, and just... Yeah, that's just a reminder of how unprecedented this situation has been. Um, these are photos I took myself about a mile and a half from where I live in Edinburgh. Um, and this was it toward the end of lockdown. Um, and just, you know, seeing scenes you've never seen, the, the High Street in Edinburgh, um, New Street, um, with no tourists, nobody there really at all. Um, 
on the other hand, uh, you know, these spaces that be, where, where important are green spaces, our guidance cut covers that for exercise and for um, physical activity. Um, so the, 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 the kind of importance of the outdoors and, and that includes public spaces has been really magnified the quality of our spaces and how important that is at, at neighbourhood level as well, the quality of our streets and local shops. So, um, so as lockdown eases, things will, will change and I think that's the, the tricky part is balancing the need for you know, you know, public health and, and, and uh, suppressing the spread of the virus as we've been doing with the, the need to, to, to generate uh, and re sustain our, our economic um, base and, and get that moving again. So um, we've also got the opportunity to think of things differently in the future, um, going from the temporary interventions that are happening now into um, longer term change. So I'll cover a bit of that in, in the talk as well. So the next slide, thanks. Um, so just going to talk through the guidance itself um, it sets out some of the principles about managing um, public spaces and different settings including high streets and um, it helps to identify the key issues that need to be um, addressed and the sort of interventions that might be helpful so there's a decision tree that allows a sort of checklist approach to be taken and any kind of key challenges um, identified. So it's a bit like other guidance in terms of, it's a bit like a risk, risk assessment to say, where are the kind of challenges going to um, happen? Where are the pinch points? Where are we going to have problems with queuing, physical distancing, uh, and, and these sorts of things? How can we deal with issues around that accessibility? Um, so the next slide. Um, and that goes into uh, the management of these spaces, urban spaces, urban centres, high streets. Um, and starts to give examples of the interventions that can be uh, introduced and um, how they might be uh, applied, the various issues that need to be thought about. Um, so, as I've mentioned, that will be to do with queuing, um, movement, widening pavements, providing extra space for pedestrians for physical distancing, introducing cycleways, um, really important to have that emphasis on active travel, given that um, public transport's not going to be operating at full capacity for some time. Accessibility, I've mentioned, uh, dealing with street furniture and clutter, signage and marking. So there's a whole range of issues that need to be thought about and there's lots of um, advice and the, the sort of uh, interventions that can be helpful here. Uh, so the next slide. Um, and this is a section that we added in um, which is additional to the, the UK government's guidance, we were really keen that um, that issue around active travel and mobility was addressed more fully. And um, so we started to develop our own uh, diagrams just to show how space, especially because we got some feedback that um, the documents seem to be very focused on large urban um, centres English guidance. So we tried to develop some schematic diagrams that, you know, would, would be relevant to uh, Scottish high streets. Um, so this is showing how, uh, you know, space for queuing, uh, cycleways, and additional widening pavements can be uh, introduced to manage um, the space around shops um, and uh, businesses. Uh, so hopefully they're, they're, you know, diagrams which uh, allow, um, you know, that can be uh, adapted to suit individual circumstances but um, health and well-being is really I think important in all of this and the uh, encouragement of walking and cycling has been a key, a key um, factor in uh, our thinking in this section. So next slide. Uh, yeah this and then this this goes into almost like the um, you know the next sort of uh, area of interest which is with hospitality opening up the our high streets will be even uh, and public spaces will be used perhaps in new and uh, creative ways to accommodate um, you know outdoor um, hospitality drinking and eating and so on so this is showing how that could happen you know with the kind of idea of the um, 
taking over parking spaces to, to provide little pop-up cafes or indeed you know street closures to create a new new kind of public spaces that accommodates um, you know that kind of activity as well as movement pedestrian movement and um, so hopefully these these are kind of helpful kind of suggestions and uh, can be adapted to suit um, different circumstances and um, so I think um, that that's uh, all the slides I've got I think just in summing up I think the shop the shop local campaign is is, is really welcome um, I think there is a lot of, as Phil was talking about, we need to rethink how our urban centres and high streets will operate. Home working uh, you know, is going to have a, a longer term impact on this, at least over the next few months, uh, and potentially longer term. So I think our high streets, public spaces will continue to reconfigure, um, but hopefully the potential to create you know, really attractive people-based spaces um, will make it um, possible for people to <laughs> and use their high streets in uh, new uh, and uh, accessible and um, interesting ways. So um, that's, that's, that's really, I just wanted to kind of um, focus on the, the guidance and link into the sort of longer term potential of, uh, you know, creating new opportunities for Businesses to operate safely and people to enjoy high street safety. Okay. That's it, Phil. Thanks. That's great, Ian. Thanks. Thanks for that overview. It's a document that's going to be very helpful over the coming weeks for people to um, refer to. Uh, Ian is going to be able to stay with us for another short period of time. He's had a meeting delayed slightly, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get some, some time during the q and if people have got specific questions they would like to ask. So without uh, further ado, I, I think this is probably just as valuable in terms of when we get down to the local level. So uh, uh, we've got Aberdeenshire, Mary Stewart is the, the head of Planning Infrastructure Services, and I think there's a brilliant case study here just to show other local authorities how collaboration across departments can actually help businesses, because we've seen this from down south, who, where they opened up a wee bit earlier than us in Northern Ireland, the same. Lots of issues started to emerge around licensing, trading standards. These are all different departments within local government. And, you know, one of the frustrations that we hear even before COVID is getting the right person in the council, you know, which department should it go to? So let's hear from Mary now in terms of the Aberdeenshire approach to see if there's any learning that could be shared more widely across Scotland. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, Phil. And, and thank you all for, for the invite this morning. We're obviously very happy to come and speak to you all about what we've been doing to support our businesses in Aberdeenshire, but in particular to focus on uh, as you say, the multi-service group approach that's been set up and to, to assist these businesses to reopen, obviously in the wake of the easing of lockdown and uh, as we work our way through the Scottish Government uh, route map. Uh, firstly, I, I will give a brief scene setting overview of our strategic team, um, which is the reopening of businesses. So um, I have slide two, Alison, which should be, yeah, that, that's you, thank you. And um, yes, yeah, so, so, so very briefly, during lockdown, Aberdeenshire Council established a cross-service infrastructure strategic group, and this was to enable businesses to reopen within Aberdeenshire in line, as I said, with the Scottish Government route map um, and the associated phasing. And this was essentially to allow business owners to seek assistance, uh, to get easy access to advice and information, and to make contact and speak to relevant council officers directly, and also to direct inquiries, most importantly, to one single email address, and also to receive a one council response. Next slide, please, Alison. 
So before I continue, it should be said that the Council has been fully occupied in supporting businesses across Aberdeenshire in many ways anyway, and this group is only one such strand delivering a specific service. And this slide indicates that the breadth of work um, that has been, and support that's been offered, and it's still being offered by the Council's Economic Development Service in particular, and economic development colleagues are obviously here today to, to, to answer any questions. So you can see on this slide, there, there's a variation of work that's being carried out by the Economic Development um, Service. There's lots of partnership work. And there's, there's, there's a couple of specific Aberdeenshire Council um, funds, um, one, one being the Brass Fund there. Uh, there's also um, relocation of monies to the town centres. Uh, and I'll go on to later, we've also had um, business focus webinars to be held for the business community. So a lot of work has been ongoing and, and still is ongoing to, to help the services in, in the Shire. Next slide, please, Alison. So what was the aim of the group? Basically, the aim of the group is to deal with inquiries strategically, making the process of reopening as streamlined as possible, and to help reduce the timescales on any necessary decision-making processes. This is in line with the government's desire of flexibility in approach and pragmatism in solution finding, and considering the difficulties for businesses in reopening while having to adapt the ways of, of operating once they've opened. I would say that a balanced approach has had to be taken um, and that's appreciating the remit of each individual service and obviously their respective regulations and guidelines and I will touch with, on this uh, slightly later when we're looking at um, any potential barriers that we've come across. So in effect our offer to businesses was to give them the ability to, to direct their inquiries to one space i.e. one submission no form filling, and to receive a one council response to assist them in, in moving forward. So where did this come from? I suppose as easing of lockdown became a reality and phasing was progressing through the Scottish Government, there was a real recognition that businesses in the Shire were looking to reopen, but obviously in a different way. They were wanting to adapt the way of operating, uh, whether to look for more scope to operate outdoors, using areas of open space, car parks, pavements and other areas. And it's fair to say, with, with some exceptions, these were largely relating to the hospitality sector. So um, why was a team pulled together? It was noted that piecemeal inquiries to different services started to come in. It became apparent that multi responses by multi services to one business was not going to be particularly streamlined and efficient for, for either party. And there was bound to be a, a lack of consistency in approach throughout the Shire. So it was obvious that a more collaborative approach was required and time was the essence for these businesses to organise themselves and to get themselves up and running for opening in line with the Scottish Government phasing. Next, fa uh, next slide please Alison. So, so how was this done? Well, first of all, with, with great speed, we, we really recognised that, as I said, time was off the essence and we didn't have much time to get this up and running to enable businesses themselves to get up and running. So it's worth reflecting on, on one of the council's priorities, which I've put up in the slide here. And that's basically the priority, which indicates that as a council, we take informed decisions as close to the action as possible. So we're talking about um, decisions in areas, in local areas, really close to the action. We use information and skills to make the right things happen. We have freedom to make sensible decisions, and this is supported by senior management. And, and I think most importantly and most, most relevant for this particular project is that we are involved in making sure that we have as few rules as possible, and our ways of working are as simple as, as they can be. And this priority, I have to say, has really come to the forefront during the COVID crisis. And this really helped in getting this group up and running. It was a quick turnaround, it was a simple way of working and getting all the relevant services and people on board, recognising the benefits of doing so. So representatives from the relevant services were brought together. There, within that group, it consists of economic development, licensing, environmental health and trading standards, planning, 
building standards, transportation, roads and landscape, and representatives from legal services and also an area manager input with, within Aberdeenshire. Each service was allocated a lead person to be responsible for ensuring that input from each service was forthcoming. We put together terms of reference for the group and, and various pieces of guidance have been produced. Next slide, please, Alison. So in terms of the setup, we used virtual technology. We set up a team with, uh, through Microsoft Teams. We managed to secure administrative, administrative support, and this has proved absolutely vital in keeping the, the, the group going. Um, and, and keeping everything in order to um, create meetings and, and to get um, responses out to, to the businesses as quick as possible. We set up a one-stop mailbox where all inquiries could be deposited. This was set up relatively quickly and also we set up a dedicated web page uh, and you can see, see the link there. And basically this page provides all the relevant advice and guidance with links to all the individual services um, and also all the updating advice, because as we know, a lot of advice and guidance has come from Scottish government and various other bodies um, very quickly and advice was changing. So all updated advice and guidance is also put on that website. We also made use of the, the various assistance and support tools, for example, the guidance that came from the Scottish Government on service specific guidance through licensing, environmental health, the chief planner um, in, um, um, indicated in, in various letters in terms of um, uh, support and guidance, as was building standards. Transport Scotland put out um, e exemptions and advice on um, various elements of transportation, for example, traffic orders. And there was various um, advice and guidance that came through economic development with regards to grants and um, rates relief. Next slide, please, Alison. And that goes on to our, our communication strategy. We set up a communication strategy and it was vital to the group that its offer was to ensure quick promotion of the service, to get that out there to, to, to the businesses, to the public. Um, and thus we, we had to have very good, robust communication. We worked with our communication service in the council. We put out various media statements to the public we are involved in the social media and, and press, Twitter, etc. Elected members were fully briefed and fully updated. Senior management and staff were similarly briefed. And all the business sectors within the Shire, there was various communications that went out to them through various media platforms. The focus of this slide is the sector specific webinars that, that we carried out. We had a series of three webinars that took place for the business sectors and that attracted a good number of participants uh, and they were subsequently recorded and now they are available on the web page through YouTube uh, and everything as I say is, is now on the dedicated web page. So robust communication we found to have a very quick and speedy communication strategy has been vital um, to get this service out there to, to, to the business sector. Next slide please Alison. So as we know all council encouraged by the Scottish Government to take a pragmatic and flexible approach as possible and this is how we approached each inquiry that came to us and some examples of this as I've already said we had the chief planners letter that came to, to all planning authorities and that um, indicated that there should be a flexible and pragmatic approach to um, the way forward to solutions one example being there's a 28 day rule within planning in terms of um, development of um, open spaces, for example. Um, and there was also advice from the chief planner to say that uh, planning authorities shouldn't necessarily um, be, be quick in enforcing any works by or adaptions by businesses. So for example, if there were areas that had been adapted and they did require permission, then there would be a, a, a rule of under enforcing. And I have to say that's something that we have taken forward. In terms of licensing, there was to be a different element of speed. Uh, I, for example, fast tracking um, of, of licensing um, applications, so a very flexible approach. There was direct consultation with licensing officers, as I say, statutory timescales were, were cut, and there was a, a, a lot of promotion for occasional licenses, which have been um, used and dealt with very quickly by the licensing team. 
our legal and estates people obviously have to be involved. We were talking about council owned open space and they have been fast tracking title searches, for example, and they've been looking at offering vacant properties um, and vacant spaces to businesses looking to um, readapt their, um, their, their operations. And their environmental health and trading standards. Um, they've been looking at taking balances of approach, um, giving benefit of a doubt where there's been examples, for example, where a balanced approach has to be taken where a beer garden wants to get up and running. But there is obviously residents and, and the amenity of residents have to be taken into account. So th there's a very pragmatic look um, forward to these sort of things where businesses obviously have to have the opportunity to be successful rather than just assuming that there will, there will be noise issues that will affect amenity. So a, a very balanced approach and also our um, environmental health team and trading standards team ha have temporarily restructured um, and having a dedicated team dealing with the COVID advice and request which has proven to be very very effective. And if I could have the next slide please Alison. And this is looking at the benefits. So, so what benefits have been realised from the, this exercise, which has not been going that long. It was, uh, we first met, we had our first meeting um, at the end of June, um, but it's, it's, it's very busy and, and the scoping meetings as we call them are happening two or three times a week. Um, set out in this slide are, are the main benefits identified to date. And this is all based around the collaborative approach and ensuring that the businesses could get the advice they needed with the minimum of effort and time. We had to ask the question, why should we add to our already stressful situation for these businesses when all they're trying to do is to get their livelihoods back up and running? So obviously a collaborative multi-service approach gave quick advice, decision-making in one place and given certainty to businesses in, in difficult economic times. Effective signposting, allowing businesses to receive all the relevant advice at one time in a timely manner. And decisions, as I said before, being taken on balance with input from all the other services. So the example I gave was noise impact from a beer garden and the impact that potentially could have um, on neighbours. All has to be looked at, but a very balanced approach has to be taken. Excellent web support to get information available and updated on a regular basis, along with a strong media presence. We found this to be invaluable. And as was the opportunity to host the webinars, and that gave direct engagement, which was welcomed um, by the businesses. And hopefully this is something we, that we can keep, keep doing in the future. And solution finding and creative thinking, and, and this has been allowed by, um, by the council, by senior management through, through our priorities. And we're very hopeful that this can continue in, into further work that, that, that we do. And the next slide, Alison, please. Yeah, and I, I think we also had to mention um, potential barriers. So like all adaptive and reactive processes, where there are benefits, there, there will inevitably be barriers. Uh, and yes, we can already identify the main ones, so in terms of time scales, on occasions, the decisions that have been coming from our shelves as the group have not been as immediate as we would like for, for various reasons. Um, and then there's also existing regulations and, and legislation and whereby there has been relaxations and exemptions, that, that there's still regulations there that have concerns with regards to road safety. And there are other processes, for example, some processes in terms of traffic orders actually require Scottish Government intervention. So that there have been um, areas and elements there that we have found to be um, slightly frustrating. In terms of the state's team, there are still legal procedures to be carried out in terms of title checks um, and also fees for, for title checks and legal services there and their potential constraints and risks to the council that, that, that can't be bypassed. Um, complaints, the council still have a duty to investigate and act upon complaints and protect the amenity of its residents uh, and we have had to deal with this so the businesses are opening up 
um, areas and using them as beer gardens, we, we are dealing with complaints from residents. So no matter how pragmatic and creative we want it to be, some elements remain that perhaps we didn't get the, the positive response that all parties desired, but we're still engaging and working with these parties to look at more creative solutions for them. And the next slide please, Alison, I think that's the last one. Um, and this is lessons for future ways of working and I think even though we've got this team together very quickly and we've been very reactive to a particular set of exceptional circumstances, we do feel that this way of working is something we want to retain and take forward. So we are collating all the lessons that are being learned um, by this process. As I said, the group has been set up as a response to, to exceptional circumstances and probably with all councils coming out of lockdown, we will begin a period of reflection as we start to go forward and, and probably in very different ways and in different guises. And we will we'll all be doing things very differently. I asked the team what they thought were the benefits and lessons. And, and I think I've put this direct quote um, up on the slide here because I thought this was very apt. And this quote is, this is potentially one of the first pieces of work that truly has a one Aberdeenshire approach. Services are more understanding of each other's opinions. And instead of an applicant getting confusing or inconsistent advice, they get a council opinion to consider. It's also worth noting that, that the administrative assistance has been absolutely invaluable. So um, also uh, following this, Another consideration is, can we future-proof this as a way forward in changing times? Can this type of approach be retained and adapted to provide a service um, or collaborative service to all of our customers? I think, and I, I think the team would, would agree, we, we hope it can, and we hope that adapting the ways we work and provide services can only benefit from this type of approach. So thinking, for example, pre-application consultations on complex planning applications um, could well be utilised in this collaborative way. So hopefully this has given a brief insight into what our group is all about and its main aims of objectives and as we keep on ongoing we keep on getting inquiries in. Obviously today is a very um, um, relevant day for all the businesses in terms of how they can further adapt and open and we'll be there to, to assist as much as we can. Um, as has been said before, there's representatives from economic development, um, economic, um, environmental health and trading standards and licensing uh, and planning, and we're all here to answer any questions or queries that you may have. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Murray. And that was really, really excellent just to see the, um, the sort of positive and supportive approach being taken by Aberdeenshire Council. So thanks very much for that uh, overview. Great example of how other local authorities could follow uh, if they're not already taking that collaborative approach. Uh, we're, we're now going to go into Q&A. We have got full cast from Aberdeenshire today. So we've got Audrey Mickey, who's the Town Centre Executive. Audrey has worked closely with STP over the last number of years. Uh, obviously, we've just heard from Mari, and Mari's going to be available for questions as well. We've got Martin from Transportation and Roads. We've got Keith Simpson from Licensing, Louise from Environmental Health, and uh, uh, Alan Herbert from Trading Standards. These are all the main issues that seem to be uh, arising, you know, the, the detailed questions. How do we get seats outside of a pub? What, you know, what do we do with social distancing? How do we manage civic space? These are all the sorts of questions that uh, our colleagues will, should be able to answer for you. And again, this uh, seminar will be recorded and available as a digital asset moving forward. Uh, if there's any questions for Ian, because I'm conscious Ian actually has to go to another meeting. So Ian, our first speaker, Chief Architect, does anybody have any questions specifically targeted for Ian? And he could take his questions first and then uh, we can open it up to the, to the other delegates. Hello, uh, Phil, can you hear me here? Ian. Uh, yes, we, we do have uh, two questions for Ian, uh, if Ian would be able to take those, um, which uh, I'd be happy just to relay for, for speed for everyone, uh, if that would be best. Please do. Um, so, 
Uh, Ian, if you're with us and able to take these, uh, we have a question from Anne Doherty, which asks, are there national guidelines on the use of resting places such as benches in urban centres? Uh, some areas have taken over benches to stop people using them, uh, leaving those who want to walk and need resting points as an option to go into town. Um, so that's the, the first question. And the second is, uh, does the national strategy incorporate willingness for cooperation from bus operators or does that still uh, require local negotiations? Uh, yeah, the first, in answer to the first question, I think there's, it's like all these things, there's a kind of balance to be had, but we, we I think, in our guidance, refer to the need for resting places and accessibility, um, so that, although there's also um, discussion around uh, removing street furniture and, and planters and so on to create clearer routes, for pedestrians and also for people in, in say, wheelchairs. Uh, that has to be balanced by the need for uh, benches and resting places. Um, we've also referred to that issue in relation to queuing and, and that not everybody um, is able to stand or queue. So that needs to be given uh, consideration as well. So. Um, I think we're not saying here's the solution in every case, we're just trying to flag up um, these issues as things that need to be um, addressed. So it can be a blanket, remove all benches or take over all benches as, as we move into uh, you know, more use of our, our high streets and urban spaces. People, if you're going to make them accessible, you need to have the right measures in place to help make them accessible. Um, and the second question, I didn't, I, 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 um, I didn't quite and catch the second question. Uh, uh, was this the one on, on the, the, the bus, bus operators? Uh -huh. So it's from Gordon Carmichael, so I can maybe ask for clarity if Gordon's on as well, but it was, uh, does the national strategy incorporate willingness for cooperation from bus operators, or does that still require local negotiations? I, th I think it would require local negotiations. I think what, again, it's, we're, we're trying to show generic, typical examples um, you know, there, there's also a discussion in our document about uh, bus queues and potential relocation of bus stops to, to create more space for um, physical distancing. There's discussion around, um, you know, car-free zones. Um, so all of these things would need to be locally decided and locally negotiated. I think there was um, a case study that we're going to use for Aberdeen, where I think there's, there's been there was discussion with the local bus companies to um, put in place some, uh, you know, pedestrianised areas where uh, I think there was issues about, you know, the buses getting in, but I think that was resolved and that, that um, scheme moved ahead. So um, it, does, it does require that local negotiation. And the example from Aberdeenshire is really good. And I, I should have mentioned the chief planner letter as well and the our guidance you know, dovetails with that kind of advice where the regulatory position and the kind of spatial advice that's in our document is about trying to put these things together and come up with, you know, good solutions for that, your own areas. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, because I'm going to have to go now, actually. <laughs> I've got another meeting at 11. Um, so uh, hopefully that was helpful. And thanks very much for the invitation, Phil and Alison um, and Elaine. Thanks a million, really, Ian. That was really, really, really helpful. Thanks that. for your yeah. participation. Yeah, I think just to re-emphasize that point about the cutting through that's happened really quickly, the Aberdeenshire example is really good. You know, I think people have, we've done it in, our, in government as well. You know, so I've been working with colleagues in construction and, you know, getting construction industry restarted, colleagues um, across government to try and be you know so retail you know working really closely with our colleagues in retail Judith Hill and transport you know to try and flag up what the opportunities are and I think the other thing we'll do and I think we'll, we'll, we'll it'd be really good to, to team up with you is, is actually identifying where the good practice examples are happening I think we want to add that into our guidance and um, as we move forward just to show and demonstrate where the good practice is happening uh, and the good ideas because this is not just 
although a lot of the measures here are temporary, you know, to help with physical distancing, the, the, the kind of, um, the, it's the longer, the, the, what's going to take longer is the economic regeneration. Um, so, uh, so it'd be good to talk about that um, as over the coming weeks and months. So thanks very much. I'll, I'll have to go now. And, um, uh, and, thanks, uh, take care. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Okay, we've now got a captive audience of experts from Aberdeenshire. So can we have your questions, please? And between myself and Ewan, we'll try to pick out the most relevant and direct them to the specific expert. Have we got any questions in, Ewan, just yet? Uh, yeah, yes, we do. So um, I can relay the first two and perhaps let, uh, if possible, the Aberdeenshire staff decide who would be best to respond. If anyone would like to jump in from the team, uh, unmute themselves and, and to jump in. Uh, so the first is uh, from uh, Davina Lavery, and it is, in regard to the use of council-owned car parks and open space, has an officer from the council met with relevant businesses to help define requirements uh, around space, etc., uh, for outdoor seating? And have you mapped these across your town centres? Um, so maybe I'll leave that. Uh, I'll, I'll put that out to you, and then once we have a response, I'll go to the next question, which we've also received in. Who's best placed in the shower to answer that one? Hello, sorry, it's Martin Hall. I'll just try to find my unmute button. Uh, there we go. Grand. So in terms of car parks, uh, Aberdeenshire Council, we tend to manage car parks in our town centres um, through our, our traffic order, uh, temporary traffic, uh, our car park traffic order. Um, and obviously our town centres, uh, currently there's a bit of pressure on car parking. We've taken some on-street spaces away to make uh, additional spaces for people to 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 move around our town centres and queue for, for shops as the town, town centres get busier. So we need to um, have, a, again, the flexible and pragmatic approach that we've been speaking about the whole time. Where we have space, it can be considered um, I, in our car park to allow that. Um, that we've got enough flexibility in, in our current orders to, to allow that. I don't think we've got a one-size-fits-all position on it because it, it, it'll be different for each town and each setting. But I think um, Mary set out the, the, the sort of general um, working for the group is that we try and take everything as a flexible approach. And if it's something we can manage, then we can. But there is a very, certainly some of our town centres, there's quite a, quite a, a bit of a conflict between being able to provide space for for people and space for car parking in terms of well, how we've taken some of the on-street spaces away to make that um, widely footpaths. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's helpful. Any other questions, Ian? Uh, yes. So we have from Colin Love, any tips on engaging with the business community in towns or areas where no formal business groups exist? Uh, and he adds that um, same issue in Western Barkshire Council in areas where there aren't any formal business groups and one-to-one -one discussions have been started with key businesses, but it is time consuming. So uh, do, does anyone from Aberdeenshire Council have any tips on that issue? Um, please do uh, unmute and feel free to, to respond. Hi, um, I'll start off that one. You and it's um, Audrey Mickey here. Um, yeah, we um, I guess over the course of the work that we're that we've been doing, we've got um, quite a, a number of different contacts, um, and I guess we've been quite lucky um, here because we've launched um, one fund in particular, which has been the catalyst for um, getting contacts um, specifically in the smaller towns that we don't have business groups. It's also been the catalyst for groups come together. So we launched our Phoenix Fund, which um, has offered up between 5,000 to 10,000 to um, business associations or business groups to come together, um, with the main aim being to encourage empowerment, collaboration, innovative, creative thinking, and to get um, town centres working together um, to come up with a, a range of activities. So this has, one, helped us with a contact list. Um, it's allowed us to um, um, 
get communication with um, community councils or some of the smaller um, business retailers within um, the small town centres um, and that has really worked. We've also been using a lot of social media platforms to promote the um, strategic group work that we've been doing and that's been shared a lot between um, community councils. Um, so I say, I'd say the tip is um, I guess just start building up your contact base. We've got a very very good um, rep um, contact with the larger times and we we meet frequently if there there's anything um you know we've pulled in the larger um time centers to look at initiatives and um, like the loyalty card and um, we're looking at the shop happy app um, and rather um the the, the times do that on an individual basis we've got a really good contact list for, for pulling those together and um, which we're just now starting to um move out to those smaller times I don't know if that, that gives a lot of tips, but I guess that's what we're doing at, at Aberdeenshire. Now that's, that's really helpful, Audrey. Again, many towns won't have a chamber, a business improvement district, a traders group. So sometimes channeling information through the Federation of Small Business, but don't underestimate the power of local print media. Lots of businesses do pick up their local press, and Oban is a fantastic example where they've They've block booked the central four pages of the um, of the Open Times, and they use that as a communication mechanism. So it covers all businesses, whether they're in the bid or whatever. So don't don't forget about local press; it can be very helpful as well. Ian, we've got time for a couple more questions. Have you got anything uh, yes. specific for some of our Aberdeenshire colleagues? Uh, absolutely. So uh, another question that's come in from Derek Harper is uh, for all the Aberdeenshire officers. Uh, can you give an example of working with community anchor organisations uh, in developing uh, or working with your one Aberdeenshire approach? So, so really any, any insight as to how the council's worked with community anchor organisations as part of your approach uh, over this time? Uh, when did you want me to do that one, colleagues? Okay, this is Reid Hutchison. I'm the Community Economic Development Coordinator. So in Aberdeenshire, we've got a kind of quite a long-standing relationship with a number of development trusts and also rural partnerships. So one of the things we did very early on with our service level agreement was on the 18th of March, almost at the kind of beginning of lockdown, we actually very quickly extended that SLA for the six months so that they had the confidence to go out and start being part of our community resilience response. And then actually subsequently in June, we went to an infrastructure service committee basically to get the council's agreement that we actually would extend that to the end of this financial year. So we've really, in a sense, taken away the pressure of their survival or would they be furloughing staff so that actually they, along with ourselves and other community partners, can really start to work closely with community anchor organisations and the wider community, and especially, obviously, our residents who are at risk. Okay, thanks. Ian, we'll probably time for another two. Um, I am just having a quick look. So we have, we're having various thoughts coming in, such as should Scotland develop a pop-up shop model? Um, many business. So, so that's more of a, a general question. We've not had more specific ones in. I would perhaps invite if any members of the Aberdeenshire team have thoughts on those questions we've had in so far that they weren't able to add at the time, or indeed anything else we'd like to add about um, guidance or tips from for the one areas of work, perhaps. Yes, good morning, you and it's uh, Keith Simpson here, the licensing officer. There was a question further up about time skills for occasional licenses. Uh, which I can, I can take, I think, primarily what would normally happen is it could be about four to prior to any event. Um, but clearly under the, the current restrictions, we are trying to, are you hearing me okay, is my internet bad? It's a little bit jumpy, but I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you, yes. Yep, okay. Just to see the answer to turn around of occasional licenses, we, 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 we could do it in less than seven days, was, was the answer to the question that was posed.
Thank you very much, Keith. Um, Sorry, my internet connection is very bad. Anyone else from Aberdeenshire Council, as we have a couple of minutes and, and, and then I can pass back to Phil, uh, have anything that they wish to add with it to any of the questions asked? You and I'll just, um, there's a couple of um, questions in the link asking for information um, on the, the Phoenix Fund. Um, we've put the, Leslie from um, Peter Hedbid has kindly put that link in for us. Um, but if there's any other questions or anything, please just let everyone uh, tell them just to come direct. Um, and I think Hazel has offered to give us some feedback that that would be um, welcome, Hazel, thank you. Thank you very much. Phil, I'm going to pass back to you. Uh, I actually just want to give a very quick response myself because I see a few people are asking about Scotland Gloves Local. How will that be launched? Will there be marketing materials available? And as I'm just working on that myself, if I could just say that uh, the plan is for a full media launch on Monday, uh, so with, with broadcast and print, as well as through Scotland's Towns Partnerships web uh, and bulletin and other channels, uh, and then Yes, as part of that, either on the day of the launch or very soon after, there will be marketing materials available um, that people can draw in for their own local campaigns and circumstances, and we'll be communicating that through Scotland's Towns Partnerships newsletter list. So you, if you're not on our newsletter mailing list, please do sign up via our website uh, to get all of that information and, and contact us with any other questions as well. Uh, Phil, if I may just pass back to you. Fantastic, Ian. That's a, a very good update, so thanks for that. Hey, I really want to thank Aberdeenshire in particular for giving us such a positive example of how local government can support the, the reopening of the economy. Hey, I think it's worth just pointing out that central government, local government, bids, partnerships, community groups have really all stepped up to the plate during the pandemic. And it just shows you what we can do as a country when we work together. So thanks for attending. I think the key messages here are flexibility, pragmatism, collaboration, uh, and there's just that supportive, nurturing approach that we all have to uh, adopt in, in what are very challenging conditions. So good luck with your reopening. Take care and remember, wear the mask. Wear the mask.